today we get to experience the further adventures of Primarch Vulcan and Ferris Manus, the ghost of Ferris Manus. He is a skull ghost. Ghost. Anyhow, um, we're going to not check out the podcast today, um, which would be on the Black Templars. We're actually going to be looking at the Tale of Two Primarchs, Episode 1, Catachan Capers. Now, um, this, uh, I was hoping to do the other podcast, but just, it's going to be about a two hour a two hour recording and then on top of that another two hours to actually process the video so I just don't have the time tonight but I will this weekend so at least by Sunday so that's all good so we're gonna go ahead and get into this we have this um, and a couple of other videos here and there that uh, I need to get caught up on before we advance further into the episodes of Texas speech but this is in Korax's own words, uh, words, the worst idea for a spinoff ever. So we're going to take a look at this. Here we go. Sorry, friends. This here corner of the room is very dark for some reason. I tend to use it for them dramatical entrances in case someone... What is this, like, pop-up video? Fresh air upon my skin is like the flinching daggers of a thousand, thousand medial urchins going at a sack of potatoes. All right, we're out of here. Let's go, 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 go <laughs> back to the Imperial Palace. Silvery cat, dude. Have I not been able to gaze upon in the halls of the Imperial Palace that Magnus the Red? Nine times, damned traitor, could so easily slip inside. Corbies! <laughs> no, no. Oh, I missed you, friend. Look at this! I need that as an alarm. I really do. Go to the Imperial Palace, like, right now. But the skeletal remains must too be embraced, they do. One bread or bone at a time. But first, I must make a tour of the Imperium of Mars. It has been too long since I have gotten a breath of fresh air. We shall see the works we fought for. And after that, we shall see a dead boy. That sounds like the worst idea for a spin-off ever. Now let <laughs> us all go. Adventure! Adventure! Uh, yes! Adventure! The bad thing is the set of salamanders are mostly like this. The f oh my god. So I'm trying to decide if I'm going to stop it for each one of these pop-ups. The salamanders do have the coolest symbol, though. Chapter Master Trishan. It truly is an honor. This honor is mine, Kaiban Shrek, Master of Shadows. We have to wait to thine arrival. It is true. It is really, truly true. Truly? Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, indeed. He awaits thee on the deck of Commandeth. If you will, please follow with my locomotion, beloved cousin friends. Oh my god. By the forests of Kievar. My. Kiev. Oh god damn it. Kievar is the world, is the planet around which the Raven Guard's home moon of Deliverance orbits. It's like a forest world. What with forest is pretty weird. And it, it's beyond weird. Kiavar is beyond kind of uh, pretty weird. My Primarch! Children, dearest. Deliverance hath come. My Primarch. <clears throat> the Raven Guard has served loyally in your name throughout the eras. Ever have we chased your shadow in quest of your guidance? To follow with your silent footsteps. You need not seek mine shadow any longer, children. Rather, it is I who shall join in yours, the shade shaped from your unflinching loyalty and staunched brotherhood for over ten thousand years. I shall serve alongside you, my sons. Together, we shall spread to all the light that graces our unworthy forms. For I swear to leave the ravens of Kiavar nevermore. My hearts are floating <laughs> with pride, my father. 
Are we truly worthy? No. <laughs> Don't die, Shrike. You'll shame the chapter. <laughs> <laughs> Shut your feet, Caddis. Rise, children. It is I who remains unworthy. But matters of extreme pressure have led me out of my box of quasi-eternal solitude. Extreme pressure? Ooh, was your fluid recovery system malfunctioning, it's Father? It's like Grandpa's yeah, Catherine not, with not a... Kind of oh, pressure, that's disgusting. So. Oh. No. Oh. No. <laughs> Please pardon him, Father. No, no, I, uh... I deserve that. <laughs> Hello! I am here, too. Oh, of course. Please excuse me, Lord Father. <laughs> <laughs> you are nothing if not the politest little raven I ever did see. Vulcan, stop unintentionally murdering my son. My <laughs> <laughs> <Just mistake>. lungs. <laughs> no, no. This is my fault. I shouldn't have acted so approachable. Well, considering the circumstances, <laughs> I would say that we celebrate this momentous occasion. <laughs> yes, yes, I fine idea, Lord Vulcan. I suggest we mount a 19 day long silent vigil so that we can at last seek full unity with our return primates <laughs> and carry upon our shoulders the darkest black burden of this galaxy of, of blood and slaughter and, and doom. Totally. <laughs> I am on the least. Pardon my petulance, but need I remind you that terror is in jeopardy? What? Terror? What has happened to the throne world? We called upon you not only for our reunion, but also for support. We have reason to believe Terra is under siege by my abhorrent brother, Magnus the Red. No. The cradle of man itself. How could the Raven God have missed such crucial information? We did receive word for the astropathic Grapevine that the Inquisition and the, Inquisition and the Ecclesiarchy are on the receiving end of some reformations. Ooh. Those reports <laughs> also claim that the Emperor himself had enacted those reformations. I wanted to believe it, but instead idly waited for further developments. Really? Remarkable. The prevention and expulsion of such organizations is something I definitely could see my father doing. <laughs> perhaps it is true. Or perhaps not. What we know for a fact is that Magnus ostensibly has access to the Imperial Palace and perhaps through that the High Lords. Surveying this critically, it would be quite simple to draw the conclusion that Magnus is planning something. Something that bodes... super ill. Super. But what if Father has returned? and brought Magnus back into his fold. <laughs> Come, brother, don't be ridiculous. Magnus killed you. All we know is that the throne world might be under siege, which is why we must make haste and flay him alive with your- Excuse me, my lords. What is it, Bond's friend? The astropath wishes permission to enter the command deck. She has urgent reports. Send her in. Master Sassafras, you may enter. Sassafras? Lovely. Um, excuse my intrusion, lords. I have intercepted communications from a nearby subsector. What does this communicate entangle, Astropath? Uh, the stress call from the planet How the fuck is you to pronounce this? Nkumura Jetson. Nkumura Jetson. something, whatever. It is sent at the behest of the Katachan 2nd Regiment. They urgently need help defending the planet from a chaos threat. The Raven God fought with the proud Katachan 2nd in the Damocles Gulf. I would not take Colonel Strachan for one to send distress calls, unless it is a very dire situation. I literally am thinking about doing the Damocles Gulf Crusade as an entire lore video for my for first lore video, because nothing to me in, the in, in, in 40k was funnier than the absolute ass stomping that the Tau got were when they thought that they were the absolute the they didn't think their shit stunk and then the Damocles Gulf Crusade happened and it changed the way they looked at the universe. I swear that man should have been a space marine. Then we shall travel to their aid. Falcon, we must make for Terra. Human blood spilt would be a hundredfold. A thousandfold! If Terra were to fall, we must leave these guardsmen to their fate. My brother, 
Whether or not Terra has fallen, we cannot neglect saving human life that is within our direct reach. Very The more we you. save, the more we can consolidate our forces for our merry crusade to Terra. These men shall join our ranks as friends of battle. I am surprised you are still capable of logical decisions. <laughs> oh, my full of surprises! All right, let's make this quick. Adventure! Nice. Oh boy. Oh, that, that looks painful. The eternally enduring dance of the damned will be determined. I must have those muscles, man! Come on, what are you? Canakan jungle fighters or a bunch of spaghetti limb void boards? Didn't your mother ever teach you to shoot straight? I don't answer that. Better question. Is this supposed to be a firing line? Well, line your fires. Connor, it's aim and shoot. Aim and aim and aim and aim! Fire your damn weapon! <laughs> Bersen, stop changing your guns like some spastic octopanda! Bossman, for the love of the Emperor, will you learn to reload on a sensible time scale? <laughs> or I will send you out with a rusty spoon! Double time, you damnable double bitch! Conrad, <laughs> tie your fracking laces! Emperor's ass, do I have to do everything myself? <laughs> Reinforcements about damn time. No! Those submen swole is not genuine. Their tampered tissues will not please the prince. <laughs> <laughs> of mankind to you, Craven Filth. Oh, no, 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 and no! These biceps are not worth the banishment! I'm out! Well, I'll be chopping news for rations. <laughs> That's the biggest marine I ever saw. That's no <laughs> Vulcan. Marine, Parker. That's Greetings, a... jungle freak. You dare speak out of line, soldier! <laughs> Holy shit! That one's even larger! I am Vulcan, Primarch of the Salamanders, and over there is my brother, Corvis Korax, Primarch of the Raving Guard. Emperor's teeth! I never thought I'd stand before one of the Emperor's own offspring! I am Colonel Strachan, and we are soldiers of the proud Kenakan Second. We salute you for aiding us with killing these horrific, walking, modern art projects! <laughs> it is of no concern. But for your lives, you are now indebted more than ever to the safeguarding of mankind. Now listen, and listen well. Terra is in peril. Your regiment, as well as every single other regiment your homeworld has to offer, shall help us to reclaim it. Oh, the throne war. Affirmative. The Catacan Second here, Terra's core, Primarch. I'd rather drink grok shit and have my corpse lathered in acid grub gravy before I let some inhuman son of a four-armed whore lay as much as a squint on Terra's holy soil. The colorful way of putting it, Colonel. Yes! <laughs> let us make for your homeward, Colonel. From there, the campaign to rally regiments to our cause shall be an effortless endeavor. As a Katakan jungle fighter, you're always close to home. They too will hear the call, sir. Pack it up, men! We're heading home to Katakan! <laughs> What's the deal with him wearing a bra? <laughs> oh god. This is rather... austere. I suppose it would be for the likes of us. It'd be hopeful burden for the kid of Katachan, my uncle. 
This jungle Michael. beats out the weakness and helps these soldiers serve with the barest of resources. This here Katachan thing is a real knife. Ha! <laughs> you call that sorry spatula a knife? Nah. Better bow before the Night Reaper, cause this is a knife. Ho ho ho! Man, what kind of shit up Grokstein am I sunk it into? Is that what you tribe yankers call knives in these here parts? A real knife is nothing less than a devil's claw knife! By Marbo's glutes. <laughs> I'll be damned. It's so big. Oh, yeah, boy. Attention! Who is in command here? This man has knives for hands. The, the man emperor listened to my prayers. What the Please fuck? Words, not my serrated assets. Well, suppose I'm in command, sir. You suppose? Yeah, because I've got the finest knife. Right, boys? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> for my own failure to show surprise, I must justly flagellate myself. Do some big important choppers, jungly boys. It is rare to see such fine alloys used in blades for Godsmith. The stuff used to produce these knives are exclusive to Katachan, sir. Yeah, they're the best cutters around. And they're not only stabbing steely gore wands, but they also mark off status. Calling knives up the likelihood of being voted sergeant and such. As long as you wield it well, of course. People look at you funny if you end up stabbing yourself a bunch. <laughs> I can dig that! So your hierarchy mimics that of orcs, but instead of judging body mass index, you are all constantly performing a regiment-wide knife measuring contest. We can see clear as sunlight that you're no less than a son of the Emperor himself, considering all that sharp stuff sticking on <laughs> you, sir. Right, whatever. Report! How is Colonel Strachan faring? No news yet, sir. He'll be coming around himself when he's got news. <coughs> In the meantime, I suggest you sit back and enjoy nature, sir. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Dismissed. <laughs> oh, ho, 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 ho. come, brother. While we wait, let us tour through these magical woods. <sighs> right. Fine. Let us tie tree bows together for a makeshift cat of nine tails. <laughs> Adventure. The fuck? Ho 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 ho! This planet doubles me to no bounds! Tank size scorpion beads, platoon eating plants, and trench foot for the power armor! I do people live here! <laughs> Is it really pronounced Kata Can? Apparently so! Then why is there a Chuck in the name? I do not think spelling is a top priority amongst the people of Kata Chen Can. Ooh, point conceded. But I am honestly surprised that nearby Sardis chapters do not use this as a recruiting world. Fair point, Caddis. To merely survive here is a feat as taxing as the most grueling of Raven Guard trials. For none to capitalize on this hardy planet's <laughs> offspring is foolish. I reckon it's the Astra Militarum's way of proving that they too can provide incredibly effective soldiers without the need for exorbitant bio-enhancements. Their mere muscular presence bolsters morale amongst troopers, makes other regiments strive to be as prestigious, and makes the entire Astra Militarum look good by association! <sighs> so, politics are to blame then. <laughs> the commander of the Imperial Army is in charge. Astra Militarum. The Wall of Guns! <laughs> requires this planet, and its elite troops to prove a point. How repulsively bureaucratic. Well, Welcome this to the Imperium, asshole! is a cherished part of Imperial history, my friends. The telling of its tales is greatly appreciated by the denizens of the Imperium. Inspiring them to greater feats of loyalty. If its reputation is of such political leverage, how come these regiments aren't provided more effective war gear? Last I checked, bare pectorals are no substitute for flak armor. Is that not a good sign? The Katakan jungle friends can get their assignment done while wasting minimal resources. Knife, last gun, big pair of boots, jungle pants, bandana, and optionally, a top. Economic, effective, and appearance wise, very. Uh, what's a better word for marketable? Tactically inept. <laughs> the one piece of war gear they sport effectively are their knives. I'm hardly sure how they even acquire them. Presumably, the local Forge World deals them their knives in exchange for the steel alloys unique to this planet. I refuse to believe for a single second that the Machine Cult would ever willingly 
waste whatever minuscule amounts of minerals that can be mined off of this world on making knives for regiments that refuse to wear even the most basic of armors. Aesthetically, the Kalachins make up for their lack of war gear. Aesthetics are as important, if not more so, than effectiveness in combat, as the Emperor himself has obviously... 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 <laughs> decree. I disagree, but I admittedly have a hard time arguing against the latter part of that point. Say, brother, I'm surprised you as a raving god would not make a point of this, but isn't wearing minimal amounts of armor a good thing when considering their speciality is asymmetrical warfare in wild grown gardens of heat and humidity? I know the necessity of their utilitarian tactics, Vulcan, but they've not been hugging for way too long. Semi -nudity. That is what I am criticizing. On death worlds where venomous animals, poisonous flora, and acid rains rule, covering your skin is surprisingly important. Did not our fluorescent friendly brother Ferris do <coughs> something similar? You know, brandishing the sheer might of humanity by showing off his flirting <laughs> muscles all the time. That is because said muscles were permanently covered in living metal. Besides, if his sons in the Iron Hands got to decide, Every single soul on this forsaken planet would carry cybernetics the likes of which would make Colonel Strachan look like an unsoiled newborn. Flesh is weak! Weak! <laughs> the real Ferris Manis would say the opposite, you dumb ghost-faced idiot. Oh! In that case, what if the Kadish and Jungle Fighters were to envelop themselves in this living metal as well? Their quote-unquote armor would be heat resistance, not too heavy, and retain their, um, marketable aesthetics. Alas, interjections are abundant. Living metal is oft only found through that of heretical Zeno's concert, and is for by principally rare. Besides, it is clearer to see that the normal musculature of Catachan folk is sufficient enough to send up any pack of hostiles flying. Well, with the departure of Demoness, but that is, to be fair, a given, considering. <laughs> Friends! Look at this toad! Falcon, we are in the middle of a discussion. Greetings, amphibian friend! I have borrowed the skull and heraldry of your interplanetary cousin. We shall be friends for a lifetime, smoke broker! <sighs> Corvus Corax, sir! I have news! Report. Word has been spread. <coughs> Regiments across all nearby sectors are already banging on the Munitorium's doors to get transferred back home to serve under your command. Excuse me, sir. Gunnery Sergeant Harker, check your zone. Park until 12 o'clock by the Jolly Green Giant, sir. Emperor's tap dancing thyroid clad. <laughs> Everyone, danger! Retreat immediately! What? Catch and barking toad, sir. The most poisonous creature in the galaxy. It'll let rip a cloud of toxins that can kill anything if it's feeling threatened. Even full to see a power armor don't help. Are you serious? It's a lesser one, so situation's under control. Everyone step out of its immediate vicinity. Alright, I do not want to believe you. But I do. <laughs> okay, step away from the frog. I would like to pet this creature. <laughs> Don't do that. It would be but a single poop on its noggin. Do not poop that very suicide. <laughs> I want to poop the snoot. Stop wanting. But stop! Must Vulcan! Want boop. No pooping! Boop! <laughs> 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 oh shit. Why does anybody give a shit? Everybody knows they're gonna get it, up. It, you are dumb, Vulcan! <laughs> dumb! <laughs> Sirs, we gotta get moving. Rare as they are, them barking toads moving close proximity to one another this time of year. Wouldn't want to meet one of them greater toads that hop around. Why is that? Oh my god. For <laughs> a damn wonder, I say. They're attracted to the smell of ammonia. You should have really gone and taken a shower, sir. <laughs> Them greater toads have their toxins travel a kilometer in seconds when detonating. We're all dead, man. No. How? Why? How could they let this happen? The raven. 
Okay, you're Raven Guard. You are not Dark Angel. Calm the fuck down. God, I'm shaking my toad! <laughs> this is the worst day. Falcon is dead! I'm so away! Galaxy! Thine grim darkness is looting <laughs> Calm yourselves. Evacuate the area. I shall remain. Blood still suckles on my pneumonia ready scalp. Oh, that's disgusting. But, but my Primark, we cannot leave you to this fate. We could never do such a thing. Kayvon, Cottus, do as I say. Your fate is that of the Raven. This toad, however, is mine. That's just My wrong. penance for crimes committed. It is a just fate, and I accept it. I was not meant to return. The galaxy needs you. More than it needs me. Fine jest, sir! But there's an issue! That toad's slowly sliding off your greasy, unwashed bush of a hairdo! Before we can get out of dodge, that toad's gonna be falling down like a warhead, killing us all! And you talking ain't making things better! You shall not die! No! I shall not share this punishment with anyone else! <sighs> you cannot me! Farewell! You must yet make your way to terror without me. Do not allow Magnus the Red to threaten Soul with his malignant presence. Vulcan will lead you well whenever he wakes up from his uh, self-imposed death nap. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> I talk Sifferous Grace. I meet my fate to feel sorrow and hate. That is the best sound clip ever. Oh, Primark! You live! Oh, thank the Emperor! Unsure how you managed to survive, but I reckon that's the makings of the Emperor's work. At work. <laughs> uh, actually, I was... saved? A uh, jungle fire like you came flying, literally flying, <laughs> from the jungle below, delivering my head from the grasp of that nuclear amphibian. Well, I'll be damned. That must have been Sly Marbo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who is this enigmatic figure? He's a rare sight, even here on his home planet. He's a box standard jungle fighter, only a private, in fact. But he's so good at what he does, he's been awarded the Star of Terror more times than anyone in the galaxy. As far as I know. The Star of Terror is the highest military honor a soldier could achieve in their lifetime. And you're saying you, he has achieved a star. More than once. Around six Private times. Marbo may be half crazy and have eyes as pretty as a corpse's, but the boy's a saint is what he is. A living, bleeding saint. But without the whole wings and dove shit. I once heard Marbo was a missing promo. I can attest on that not being <laughs> true. But <laughs> can I can you really this man my life. Pardon me, but I must ask, how did he manage to well fly? Oh, he can't fly or anything. But his aerodynamic musculature and knowledge of Kadakan jungle tree buoyancy can help him simulate flight. <laughs> the crazy bastard. Oh. Wow. Perfect. He's truly proven himself this time around. As he's technically part of my Kadakan second, I sure do hope he joins us on this Terran Crusade business. I would demand no less. If he represents your greatest warriors, I can see huge potential in you all by association. Just like you do the Militarum at large, I realize. <laughs> I am grateful to have troops such as yours join us in our crusade. Thank you, sir. Thank you. 
<laughs> yes, the strong man commando friends have officially joined us on our journey. Holy oh, shit! Oh, yes. ah, Only drill instructor Barnes could see me now. <laughs> what the fuck? Alright, let me see if there's more. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Alright, so I guess that's one of their sponsors. So, going to hit that and hit that and hit that and hit that and hit that. Okay, so that was Bro Trip 40,000, the first episode of that. There's another episode that we're going to watch maybe, uh, maybe tomorrow. I don't know yet. It'll depend on what time I get home and what I'm doing on Saturday. But until next time, guys, I'll see you then.